Dear students, today we will see transmission impairments in that attenuation. The attenuation is one type of fall in a signal strength that is medium may be guided or unguided. The strength of a signal falls off with a distance and that is called as attenuation. Okay, there may be multiple choice question. Signal falls off with distance is called dash. Strength of signal falls off with distance is called attenuation. And in case of guided media, the attenuation is logarithmic, whereas in case of unguided media, it is more complex function of the distance. The attenuation leads to several problems that may be attenuation distortion. Okay, the first one, and again the delay, everything is there. Attenuation distortion. If the strength of the signal is very low, the signal cannot be detected and interpreted properly at the receiving end. And that we will call it as a attenuation distortion. The signal strength should be sufficiently high so that the signal can be correctly detected by a receiver in presence of noise in the channel. Okay. As shown in the figure above here, 2.3.1, an amplifier can be used to compensate the attenuation of the transmission line. As you know, the amplifier amplifies the signal and that is to boost the signal and that we can use to lessen the attenuation distortion. Then the delay distortion. The velocity of propagation of different frequency components of a signal are different in guided media. This leads to delay distortion in the signal. The velocity of propagation of different frequency components. Okay. That means if you use different type of guided media, then the alternation may be different and velocity of propagation of different frequency will be there. That means the frequency may be different for the guided media and it leads to delay distortion in the signal. Maybe one may transmit higher frequency. Another one transmit maybe lower frequency or maybe lower frequency. Then what happens? There may be delay in the receiving end. So it will take more time to receive one signal. But another signal it may be, it will take some less time. Maybe for example, if it is coaxial cable, it will take more time. If you use fiber optics, it will take less time to reach the receiver side. So there may be delay distortions. There are two theoretical formula to calculate the data rate. Okay, data transmission rate. First one is Nyquist bit rate and another one is Shannon capacity. Nyquist bit rate and Shannon capacity are two formulas to calculate the data rate. What this Nyquist bit rate is? The maximum rate at which data can be correctly communicated over a channel in presence of noise and distortion is known as its channel capacity. And the first noise free channel of bandwidth B based on Nyquist formulation is known that given a bandwidth of B channel the maximum data rate that can be carried is 2B. This limitation arises due to the effect of inter-symbol interference caused by the frequency components higher than B. If the signal consists of M discrete levels, then Nyquist theorem states that maximum data rate C is equal to 2B log M bits per second. Okay, And here you have to remember what the Nyquist bit rate is to correct the communication channel when there is a noise and distortion and the formula is 
c is equal to 2b log m bits per second c is known as the channel capacity b is the bandwidth of the channel and m is the number of signal levels used okay number of signal levels used in the transmission then there is one more concept called baud rate the baud rate or signaling rate is defined as the number of distinct symbols transmitted per second the baud rate or signaling rate is defined as the number of distinct symbols transmitted per second irrespective of the form of encoding okay that is called as baud rate that means you can say that number of distinct symbols transmitted per second is measured by using baud rate for base band signal the transmission m is equal to 2 so the maximum baud rate may be 1 by element width in seconds that is equal to 2b okay the bit rate or information rate i is the actual equivalent number of bits transmitted per second so i is equal to baud rate into bits per baud that may be baud rate into n is equal to baud rate log m irrespective of the form of encoding and for base band band signal it may be different for broadband signal it may be different for binary encoding the bit rate and the baud rate are the same that is i is equal to baud rate we can determine the channel capacity by using maybe one method that is directly we can take c is equal to 2b that is for the digital transmission okay maybe by using baud rate concept that is c is equal to 2b and this is by using nyquist rate okay and when you take noise there may be effect of noise when there is a noise present in the medium the limitation of both bandwidth and noise must be considered a noise spike may cause a given level to be interpreted as a signal of greater level if it is in positive phase or a smaller level if it is negative phase noise becomes more problematic as the number of levels increases in positive phase we can find out but if it is in the negative phase then it is very problematic then the shannon capacity okay in presence of gaussian band limited white noise shannon hartley theorem gives the maximum data rate capacity that is c is equal to b log 1 plus s by n so log to the base to 1 plus s by n in the shannon capacity so where s and n are the signal and noise power respectively this theorem gives upper bound of the data rate which can be reliably transmitted over thermal noise limited channel then the line coding line coding is the process of converting digital data to digital signals remember line coding is the process of converting digital data to digital signal we assume that data in the form of text numbers graphical image audio or video are stored in computer memory as sequence of bits line coding converts a sequence of bits to a digital signal at the sender digital data are encoded into digital signal at the receiver side the digital data are recreated by decoding the digital signal okay below figure shows the concept like this is digital data and while transmitting it will be converted into digital signal by using encoder on this side again it will be transmitted by using media on the receiver side there may be decoder to convert encoded digital signal again it will convert into digital data and this concept we will call it as a line coding method in line coding there are 
different categories that is unipolar polar bipolar multi level and multi transition and unipolar all the signal levels are on one side of the time axis either above or below in unipolar encoding we use only one voltage level okay that means when you are transmitting signal and we will use maybe the voltage levels and everything will be on one side of the time axis okay that is unipolar scheme and in that there will be a non return to zero nrz unipolar scheme was designed as a non return to zero nrz this is used in unipolar scheme in this the positive voltage defines bit 1 and zero voltage defines bit 0 okay then unipolar n rz bit 1 is represented by plus a volts that is plus 5 volts and bit 0 is represented by 0 volts this is 1 and this may be 0 so this may be plus 5 that is a okay and this is 0 plus 5 volt is considered as 1 and the advantages of line coding system simplicity doesn't require a lot of bandwidth and disadvantage there may be presence of dc level okay direct current contains low frequency components no clocking component to synchronize at receiver side long string of zeros causes loss of synchronization then the second one is polar scheme in polar scheme the voltages are on both the side of the time axis remember in unipolar the voltages are on one side and in the polar scheme voltages are on both sides the voltage level for zero can be positive and the voltage level for one can be negative and non return to zero in polar nrz encoding we use two levels of voltage amplitude we can have two versions of polar that is nrz l and nrz i as shown in the figure nrz i the level of voltage determines the value of bit nrz i the inversion of the lack of inversion determines the value of the bit and the advantage of polar scheme is simplicity no dc component so here in the unipolar okay there will be presence of dc level but in the polar there is no dc component can contain low frequency components that leads to signal dropping no clocking component to synchronize to get a receiver no error correction capability and the problem with polar is return to zero that is nrz encoding occurs when the sender and receiver clocks are not synchronized the receiver does not know when one bit has ended and the next bit is starting okay and there may be positive negative and zero values in rz the signal changes not between bits but during the bit in the following figure we can see signal goes to zero in the mid of each bit okay sometime there may be transmission in this way signal goes to zero in the mid of each bit then the bipolar schemes and here we will use three levels positive zero and negative in bipolar encoding there are three voltage levels the voltage level for one data element is at zero while the voltage level for the other element alternate between positive and negative a common bipolar encoding scheme is called bipolar alternate mark inversion ami and here you can see in the bipolar bit 0 is represented by 
zero volts okay and first bit one you can see here the positive and the negative okay there are three voltages zero negative and the positive and this may be the signal okay no dc component less bandwidth than unipolar and polar no signal drop problem no clocking component to synchronize that is disadvantage limited error correction capability you can see here this is unipolar this is polar and this is bipolar you can see here in unipolar it will be at one side in the polar it will move to the another side but synchronously it moves on another side but here you can see so there will be three levels positive then maybe zero then maybe negative okay here one level one side on both the side even on both the side but there are three levels present but here there will be two levels are present then the properties of line code self synchronization low probability to bit error a spectrum that is suitable for the channel transmission bandwidth error detection capability and in the manchester encoding there are two types by phase manchester encoding differential manchester encoding then esk amplitude shift keying so esk means there may be in digital communication there may be modulation process okay which impart that means which moves sinusoidal waves to two or more discrete amplitude levels okay that means which will move sinusoidal waves in different levels these are related to the number of levels adopted by the digital message for binary message sequence there may be two levels one of which is typically zero another one is one for thus the modulated waveform consists of bursts of a sinusoidal wave below figure illustrates a binary esk signal okay now here you can see together with the binary sequence which initiated it neither signal has been band limited you can see the modulation okay now this is called as esk amplitude shift keying okay again there is transmission again there may be esk the amplitude of the carrier signal is vary to create signal elements both frequency and phase remain constant while the amplitude changes commonly one of the amplitude is zero and esk is used to transmit digital data over optical fiber since it remains constant at one level so it will not vary by that easily you can identify zero and another one is normally one if there is any variation on this side it will not make any difference that will be considered as one and what remains constant that we will take it as a zero so that's why it is used to transmit digital data over optical fiber thank you students in the next class we will continue with other concepts